Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about solubility and how different materials can be dissolved within solutions and what that means in terms of how easily or not so easily they happen to be able to be dissolved. So let's go ahead and get started here and what we mean by solubility and remember that is of a solute what we're putting into that the solubility is the maximum concentration of that solute in the solvent under specific conditions. So how much of the material can remain mixed in with that solvent under specific conditions. So we can have things like saturated solutions simply means that the concentration of the solute is equal to its solubility. You cannot add any more. It will not be able to be dissolved within the solvent. You have reached your maximum. If it is unsaturated, the concentration of the solute is less than the solubility. So you have room for more. It is not fully saturated yet. And then we can also have supersaturated, in which case the concentration of the solute exceeds the solubility. Now that may sound a little strange because I just told you up here that that wasn't possible. But there are situations where you can have this occur, where you can have supersaturated solutions, but they are not stable either. So something will happen to them and some of that material will then precipitate out and it will no longer be dissolved within the solution. So let's go ahead and look at some of these. We want to look at gases and solutions of gases within liquids. So the solubility of the gas, it typically tends to decrease as the temperature increases. So as you try to put a gas into a liquid, as they will go down, so you'll get far less. The solubility increases towards the top here. Temperature increases to the right. And for some things like helium, it doesn't change a whole lot. But for others like methane and oxygen, it decreases by a factor of two just by going from about five degrees Celsius to about 30 degrees Celsius. So an example of this could be looking at uh, solubility in water of oxygen in water. And what we find is that an increased water temperature will mean that we decrease the oxygen solubility. There is less oxygen dissolved in the water. And that's what we see as an example here where fish have actually been killed uh, because of the temperature increases. That decreases the amount of oxygen in the water and can kill off fish. Now, we also want to talk about, and we're going to look at a few examples of what we call Henry's Law. And this relates the solubility of a gas to the pressure of the gas by a constant. So we will look at those. C with a subscript G is equal to a constant K times P with a subscript G, where C subscript G is the solubility, and P with a subscript G is the actual partial pressure of that gas. So let's look at a couple examples of how we can go about using this. So what we have is we're looking at 20 degrees Celsius and the concentration of dissolved oxy oxygen uh, is one uh, 101 point at, at a pressure of 101.3 kilopascals is 1.38 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter. We now want to use the law to determine the solubility when the partial pressure is 20.7 kilopascals. So when it is much less under a much lower pressure. So we know what C sub G is. C sub G is 1.38 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter. And we know what P sub G is 101.3 kilopascals. So what we're trying to find right now, first thing we have to do is know what this constant is. We don't know that, but we do know one example. We know C and P and therefore we can go ahead and calculate those that K is equal to the ratio of these. So it's uh, C divided by P. And if we divide those two, we then find that K is 1.36 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter per kilopascal. 
So we now have that constant and now we can use that constant to calculate the new uh, solubility. So the new solubility is going to be K, which we've just determined here, multiplied by that partial pressure, which was given in the problem of 20.7 kilopascals. And if we do that and we multiply those two numbers, what we find is that the uh, solubility will be 2.82 times 10 to the negative first, negative fourth moles per liter. So we can calculate if we, we can do it in steps here. First, we have to find the constant. Then we have to go ahead and find the, uh, the new uh, solubility. So let's go ahead and look at a second example of this. And we want to see what will happen to some freshwater trout. They require a, a oxygen concentration of 7.5 milligrams per liter. And we want to see, could they survive in a polluted stream at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius with the partial pressure of oxygen at 0.17 atmospheres? And one other thing we're going to need is we're going to need to look at figure 11.8 that we looked at previously, which says that the solubility at this temperature is 1.2 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter. So now we actually have enough information to go ahead and do this. We know our equation here and we can go ahead and solve that for K. First thing we need is K. So at this temperature, we know that the solubility is 1.2 times 10 to the negative third at one atmosphere. So what that means is that we get a constant of 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. We can then use that to find out what the solubility will be at this 0.17 atmospheres. So we know K, we've just determined that. P, we're given in the problem of 0.17. And if we multiply those two here, the atmospheres will cancel and we can get then a solubility of 2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. Now we're not quite done because we want to actually we need to know that in terms of millig milligrams per liter. And we can also figure that out for oxygen. Remember, we can go and figure out how many grams there are per mole and oxygen would have 32 grams per mole. And then we also have to do a conversion from milligrams to grams. So convert the number of grams here. So when we multiply all of these here, moles cancel and here the grams cancel and we will end up with milligrams per liter. And when we multiply that, we would find 6.4 milligrams per liter. And what we'd find is that that is below the 7.5 milligrams per liter that the trout need to be able to thrive. So this is where you would start to see some of those fish beginning to die off because there is simply not enough dissolved oxygen in the water because of the much higher temperature. Now, we also want to look at solutions. This was, ga was gases and liquids. Let's look at liquids in liquids. So if we're mixing different liquids, we can have miscible liquids, which can be mixed together in any proportion and will remain mixed together. Things like ethanol, sulfuric acid, eth ethylene glycol, antifreeze here actually will stay mixed together at any proportion. So you can have this as example pre-diluted and meaning that you can have it mixed with it's already mixed with water and that then will remain mixed so you don't have to do any mixing. You can also have immiscible liquids and examples of those would be oil, gasoline or benzene, which will not mix well with water. So if you have oil and water, oil will end up up on the surface here with the water down below. So you can have a combination of the two, but they don't mix together well. You can also get things that are partially miscible. And some some of those, those are liquids that partially mix together. And we can look at one example here where materials are mixed together uh, to some extent. We have the two individual materials off to the left hand side here and the water. And when we mix them together, one liquid stays at the bottom for the most part. 
But some of it does mix in. It's partially mixed in with the water. There's not a complete separation of the two as there was with the water and oil. These would be something that would be called partially miscible. Now, we can also have solutions of solids in liquids. So we're looking at all different types here. We looked at gases in liquids, liquids in liquids. Now, how about solids in liquids? Now, you note that it's actually a little bit different here. In this case, the solubility will increase with temperature. And we can see that increases rather drastically. For example, in very cold water, sugar does not dissolve as well. But as you heat up that water, the sugar dissolves much more easily. Uh, KNO3, even more extreme, barely dissolves at all at very cold temperatures, but dissolves very easily at much higher temperatures. Others, some things like salt, don't change as much. There's a very little of a change in terms of how much salt will dissolve, even whether it's a low or a high temperature. Now we can also get what are called supersaturated solutions. And we talked about these early on. These are ones that are oversaturated over what should be able to be held at that temperature. Well, what can be done is you can prepare them at a higher temperature and then cool them off. So if you cool it off and you keep that concentration, then you are super saturated. You shouldn't be any more saturated than this at that temperature. But you have all of this material dissolved within it. And these can remain stable until something happens to them. And we can actually see things like this, such as a uh, heat pack here. And the heat pack will remain nice and stable until you do something. Uh, sometimes it's a seed crystal that's added. You add one crystal to it, and all of a sudden, everything will crystallize out or some kind of mechanical agitation that will occur. In this case, you press the little circle here, and that will then release enough to start this heating up. And it will then begin to heat up because right now it is a super saturated solution. It will not change in the meantime. It will just sit there nice and calm until you give it that little bit of a kick to get it started. And that will then begin the reaction that will crystallize material out. And in this case, you'll get a reaction that will heat up the hand warmer uh, here. So let's go ahead and finish up and look at our summary. So what we looked at in this section was the solubility of a material, which was how much of the solute that can be dissolved in a solution. We looked at and did a couple examples with Henry's law that allows us to calculate the solubility of gases within liquids. And we looked at liquids in liquids, which can be either miscible, immiscible, or partially miscible. So that concludes this lecture on solubility. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.